Welcome to Tech Brothers with Ahmed. Today we are going to answer this question. For indirect configuration, do you create a user variable or system variable to hold connection string? Connection string for what? Connection string for XML configuration file or for a SSIS configuration table. So in the in the indirect configuration, we create this environmental variable where we save the value or for our or path for our XML configuration file or we save the connection string for our SSIS configuration table. So we, what type of variable do we use? So I'm going to show you what exactly we do use and how we do configure that. If you are using different versions of uh, Windows, you, uh, that might be a little different. If you're using old versions, you can hit start button and go to the start and computer right click and go to the properties. In my case, I'm using Windows 8.1. So, uh, you know, I have to click uh, on this button. Windows button here, you know, and right click here. I'm going to go to search and then I'm going to search for this PC. Okay, th that's my computer. So I right click here, go to properties, and then inside the properties, I will be going to advanced system configuration. That's where I will see environmental variables tab. I will hit that one. And now I have user variable for Amir and I have system variables. I do not want to create the user variable. I don't want to hit here new and create the variable. Why? These variables are only accessible to Amir. I want to create a system variable. So that will be, a, 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 any user will be able to use that va variable and the values of that. So if you are using SQL Server agent to run the jobs and all that, so that, that uh, um, user uh, will be able to access the value of that variable. So we always create the system variable and uh, that's how the applications can access that. We do not want to just uh, create this variable for one user. Hit new and then here you can provide the values for let's say we say SSIS config and um, we can uh, name it um, um, that, that, that's it probably or uh, if you want to rename uh, something different you know uh, according to the requirement you can give the name of whatever you like so here you will be saving the value of uh, XML path uh, where, uh, where XML configuration file is going to be, uh, you know, or uh, the, you will save the connection string for your SQL Server. Let's go back and uh, copy the connection string. So go uh, go uh, to one of the connection, and let's say we are using this one. We can go to properties, and we can copy the whole thing, and then we can provide the value here in the variable. Paste. And if you are just uh, needing uh, only the server name and uh, the database name, that's all you can provide here. If you are using XML configuration, so then it, it will be, let's say on C drive, or, you know, wherever the XML file is, so you will be providing that path. So in all of your environments, then SIT, dev, QA, your variable name is going to be the same. So whenever your package runs, it is going to come to this, uh, Path, uh, variable and then read the path of a SQL Server uh, or configuration if it is uh, you know in this database uh, and uh, if you are using XML it is going to read the file path of XML configuration file and then uh, read all the rest of the configuration from there so you hit OK and now we hit OK and uh, hit OK so if we go here now and go to configuration and add and hit new and uh, let's go to the uh, environmental variable and see if the environmental variable is there. So he, uh, click uh, SSIS configuration. So this one I already created uh, yesterday. So that's there. So in, right now I don't see SSIS uh, config variable here. So in this case, uh, I, uh, what we need to do, cancel this out, close it, and then uh, save everything. Close the bids uh, or SSDT. In some cases, uh, you might have to restart uh, the server. But uh, what I was doing yesterday, I, I was testing this out. Uh, and what I did, uh, I closed the bids uh, or SSDT. And uh, uh, when I came back, uh, it the variable was there. So by refreshing the project, uh, it can, it it might uh, uh, you know read the um, va variable. So let's try this out real quick. Uh, and if that works, that's fine. But uh, I have read some solutions, you know, um, if the variable is not there, you can restart your computer and uh, that's how the variable will be available to the bids. So 
I'm gonna give it just a second here and uh, waiting for the packages to be read and uh, we can go ahead and see if the variable is there that uh, restarting computer um, might be not a recommended uh, solution always you know and uh, there could be you know other uh, options we can always go ahead and refresh the system variables uh, by using some commands uh, but uh, first thing what we are doing here yesterday I did so I, I restarted my project and I was able to do it so I'm gonna do the same thing and see if uh, you know that's the case and it is there so I don't have to restart my computer hit next environmental variable hit uh, right SSIS drop down so yes by just uh, restarting uh, our bids uh, or SSDT the, it refreshed uh, and got the list of the environmental variables uh, and we are able to see that so now you can hit next uh, and provide the configuration and whatever so uh, just to shorten this out uh, so what we have to do we have to create the system variable to hold uh, the value for our XML configuration file or for a SQL server configuration table thanks very much for watching this video I will see you in next video